Hey everybody! Today's project du jour is fixing the old mower. That's better. That's better. I wiped off the uh, screen there. Anyway, this is a <coughs> Toro Recycler 22. It's got 22 recyclers in it. They cycle around with the grass. Anyway, it's an older mower. I've had it for a long time and it's actually been a great piece of lawn equipment. But you notice that it's due for a tire change here. The tire tread should have some little, little traction on them. And, well, gosh, this has just traveled around the earth several times. And more importantly, this wheel is very wobbly. And what that has led to is that the, uh, the wheel, when it rotates, you hear that crunchy sound? That crunchy sound happens when it's in drive. It's self-propelled. This is a rear drive mower. Those front drive mowers are for people who don't really care about their lawn. Anyway, that crunchy sound happens and it gets jacked up. And I got to thinking, is it time for a new mower? And I said, no, I'm me. I'm going to fix this. So let me show you how to fix it. It's really not that hard. Now, before you start this operation, you're going to need replacement parts. And... Uh, this I got this as a set online these are the pinion drive gears I'll show you how to change them but if you're changing the wheels you're right here and these little pinion drives wear out and they can be source of the problem these are the uh, these are the replacement wheels you can see the tread these are gonna have great traction in the snow now it's almost an exact replacement but there's one change this drive gear, cog gear, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, is now, is, is now, uh, it's made of, it looks like it's like glass reinforced fibers or something. The old one's metal, steel. And I'm, I'm a little, I don't know, I have a bad feeling that <laughs> this replacement one might not last as long. But then again, it could actually be a design upgrade because these old ones, this mower is 10 years old. These old ones, just, you'll see the failure. The failure's pretty pretty tragic on the inside. All right, let's take it apart. By the way, this is a half inch drive, which is also 13 millimeters. <clears throat> oh, that was very wobbly. Let's try to do this one-handed. Oh. cameraman help me out here uh so this plate comes off right and there's our guts on the inside of, ah my goodness i think it's falling on the ground there's a bolt don't lose the bolt you'll notice there's a little grease on there that's okay we need that and then there's our wheel i don't know maybe that wheel is not steel maybe it is fiber oh let me clean this up I'll be a dumb, dumb, dummy head. When I first looked at this, I thought this wheel was steel. It's not. It's, uh, I'm sorry, the, I thought the cog was steel. It's not, it is plastic, but you can see that those teeth are mashed up and you can see where those ones are rounded off and that the whole thing is just a sad, it's had, it's had a rough 10, 11 years here. The teeth are all, uh, they're all, they're all hammered down there on one side. See how that one side's worn? Right here, right? Right here, this is, these teeth are flatter. That's where it skips. And so the pinion too, the pinion is really sharp. Let's hold it up against it. I probably didn't need this, but yeah, I probably didn't need to replace the pinions. I'll replace them anyway. So to get the pinions off, why not, I got them. Uh, I'm gonna sit here and replace the circlip. Pull that little circlip off. All right, so <clears throat> you're gonna need a pair of uh, snap ring pliers. And these ones are not, these are really good ones. Well, they were good. These were uh, blue points from years, years ago, years of yore. Uh, tips are a little warm, but you got to be careful with snap ring pliers because they do like to snap and ring you right in the eye 
So this is definitely not a one-handed operation here, but put this guy in. You know, by the way, if you didn't know, snap ring pliers are reversible. You simply take the screw out if you got these old style ones, and then you can reverse them like that. Oh yeah, nope, I did it wrong. I'm a dummy. Gosh, Mr. Reed, what is wrong with you? It's almost like you were teaching all day in front of a computer. There we go. Stretch them out a little bit, so pull that off. Put that aside. Don't don't lose this thing. If you lose this, it doesn't come with the kit and it ain't going back together. Slide that pinion off. Ooh, look at that pinion. Don't lose that little washer either. Little greasy washer stuck to the back. And you know, looking at this, that washer just wants to commit suicide, doesn't it? Looking at this, uh, I'm gonna say that this was actually kind of a good deal to replace this because if you look at the top of that there, it's definitely worn. Huh. Uh, for the price of these things, yeah, that's all That's all hogged out. Man, that's sharp as a razor. Oh my gosh. No wonder it chewed that plastic piece up. Holy shnikes. Wow, okay. Enough with the uh, chitter chatter pitter patter here. What do we got, same part number? Yep, same part numbers. All right, be right back. All right, so we're gonna take my, uh, just take a old cloth here, wipe this off. So this spins very nicely. This is the, the input to transmission. And my gosh, when I was pushing the mower, it felt like this thing was binding up and then it would crunch and then it would break free. And I'm thinking in my head like, oh, I need a, I need a new mower, it needs a transmission. I'm, you know, I know there's people out there that just buy a new mower when the blade gets dull or it runs out of oil, but I'm not like that. I, I'd rather keep this out of a landfill and spend a little bit of a time on a weekday afternoon just fixing my stuff to keep this whole thing out of the landfill. Uh, anyway my spiel for that take your little fiber wash this washer looks like it's not metal but it's some type of nice durable plastic or fiber almost anyway that sits on top there this this washer is important because it's going to seal crap out of the uh out of the trans housing there that i guess is there bearing in there there's got to be a little bearing in there anyway take a little bit of old school uh Luber plate, your generic lithium grease here, and just sort of butter that up a little bit there. Take my new, my new pinion, slide that on. You can grab the axle from underneath if it tries to run away from you. Oh, even that's a little tighter. Wow, the old one came right off. That was sort of putting up a little fight there. I'm sure that's there on all the way. Take your snappy ring. Expando Presto snappy ring. Ah, go back. Right there, all right? The snap ring's not super tight. I always like to give them a little clunk smush them around a little bit, make sure they don't fall off. Give that pinion a little tug. Alrighty. That's good. I'm even going to wipe up a little bit of the excess grease there. So that pinion, you know, it doesn't really have to rotate like mad. But how about that? The things you learned. Alright, the bolt. So this bolt supposed to have a lot of grease on it. It's supposed to have a little bit of lubrication on it, I guess. But let me show you why. Uh, the old wheel. The old wheel. There's a metal sleeve inside of Yai old wheel. Come on out. There you go. That's that metal sleeve. So the sleeve is going to wear as this is uh, rotating around. So that's some of your axle wobble right there. But I think a majority of the axle wobble was actually the fact that the pinion was so so loose. The 
you know, when the wheel sits on the ground with the weight of the mower on it, that, that the drive wheel is really pushed up against there. So the fact that that whole thing could shift was because there was so much freaking free play between that worn section and the uh, old pinion. All right, enough. So I realized in the edit that the uh, pinion does not ride up and push up against the bottom of the wheel. Um, it sits to the side, so the stress is really very low. The stress is going to be up against that pinion. You know, if you push down and turn, um, which I actually do quite a bit, and I, I tend to turn to the left with the mower, which I think is why that wheel is more worn out than the other side. Put that sleeve, and I guess there's a little cover here. I lost that years ago, whatever. Um, I'm gonna put, make sure my bolt fits. Hey, look at that, it goes right through. Now I'm gonna take a little bit, just a dab, with the lithium grease, just a little bit here. I'm not going bonkers crazy. There's probably a torque spec for this bolt, but you know what? It's a lawnmower. I know right now somebody in watching this on the lawnmower channel is jumping up and down, going, "It's gonna be 35 foot pounds, dude! That's a lawnmower, dude." All right. It's not, it's not a transmission on a Ferrari. Heck, it's not even a Mini Cooper or a Volkswagen. No, nah, I kid. I think Toro makes great products. Uh, so this is kind of weird. Like, this thing just sort of flops around here. I, I don't know. You can't hold this up because your hand is going to be in the way of the wheel. So this is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to move. I sort of have to do a one-two one-two punch you gotta you gotta put this on they don't really want grass clippings in in the drive there so you just put that on like that and then you just take the whole thing and just kind of fish it on yeah yeah and just start to hand thread that bolt i'm looking down through the top of this looks okay to me Obviously, kind of wobbly, but it's not really tight. Ooh, that's a lot better. Wow. Well, don't fall over on the motorcycle. And look at that. Now, when I move it forwards and backwards, there's no more. <sighs> Man, this is gonna this this mower is gonna do some burnouts on the grass now. Woof, a doofa. Yeah, that's a lot better. Wow. That's uh I'm gonna say it's late years better. Cool. Well I'm gonna go do the other side. Thanks for watching. Go fix your mower.